represent our non-government organization, not non-governmental organization on malaria in Angola. Our goal is to reduce the amount of malaria cases each year. This is our NGO logo. It has a path leading up to a mosquito flying away from Angola. This is where we got the name of our NGO, Follow the Path. From. Our mission is to stop the spread of malaria throughout the Angolan area. Help donate to people in trouble by filling out the form under the donation part of our website. And join us for the Follow the Path run. Stop Malaria in the Angolan Area is our NGO slogan, and we have created a short video about our NGO. Enjoy. essay that I have created about the ec economical causes of malaria. And I will just give you a quick summary of that. Uh, malaria strongly affects the economy of Angola in many ways. There are three main reasons that this is still going on. Um, poverty is one of the main causes of malaria in Africa. People cannot afford treatment or protection from malaria. Malaria also occurs in the poorest, some of the poorest towns and villages. Typically, these communities are filled with garbage and debris, which, is the per which are the perfect places for mosquitoes to breed. And finally, the people of these poor villages also have to work outside, meaning they are more likely to get bitten. Here's my essay I've created about the ge geographical causes of malaria. Geography and malaria is a big problem in Angola. Geography is a big factor because mosquitoes like wet or damp habitats and Angola has seasonal flooding, which could cause part of that problem. Also, Angola is the land of poverty, which means they will probably have huts made out of wet m mud, which attracts mosquitoes and barely any electricity, which would force them out of their houses all day. Angola is halfway surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, which causes some of their seasonal floods and also the huge downpour of rain they get every time it rains. The PMI, or President's Malaria Initiative, works with other malaria control organizations to try and stop the spread of malaria. Malaria claims anywhere between 300 million to 500 million people each year. With the seasonal flooding, that means agriculture in Angola is in a big business. But when you walk, you make foot, a footprint in the dirt. When that happens, and then it rains, the rain fills up that footprint, making a perfect habitat for the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes go through seven stages, and the problem is that most malaria vaccines don't work because the vaccine may only kill one stage of the parasite, but then it is still alive with six stages left. With your help, we can lower the amount of people that die each year from malaria. Here's my essay I've created about the governmental causes of malaria. Government is one of the big reasons why malaria is still a major problem in Angola. After the Angolan Civil War, the government has had a very tough time trying to rebuild its health system. They have been unsuccessful trying to build an effective health system because of the lack of resources and rapid growing of the cities. If the government doesn't have a well enough health care system to be able to cure people with malaria, many people in Angola who are already infected will have a fewer chance of living. Second, money is one of the most important things when it comes to diseases, health cares, and hospitals. And it was shown that the government funding uh, was very low at first, but it has increased a lot in 2011. If they, get, uh, they have increased the amount of money that they have gone to help to fund for malaria, but if the government does not give enough money to help out, the people with malaria will not be able to get the proper treatment that they need. 
Also, the government spends a lot of money trying to pay for unusual stuff to, such as bed nets. But studies showed that 20% of the people who receive bed nets actually use them. They should actually spend their money to pay for the education on malaria and try to convince the people on using the nets. Right now, the government isn't helping to try to educate the people on malaria or the bed nets. And there's also a lot of poverty in Angola. The government should also spend their money to try to supply cleaner water, healthier foods, and more. Okay, on the donation section of our website, there's a Google form where you can donate to support our cause and participate in our run to stop malaria. So here's just our form, and we have created a t-shirt. Our propaganda we have created. It is a testimonial advertisement. It shows Adrian Peterson, a supporter of our cause, getting ready for the follow the path run. This is our solution essay we have picked out. It was writ written by Rafa, and I'm going to give a short summary about it. There are problems in Angola's government, their economy, and their landscape that make minimizing the spread of the disease extremely difficult. The government should build more affordable houses that are better for preventing mosquitoes. This will work because not as many people will be outside, which lead to less people getting bit by mosquitoes. <coughs> Business should buy more citronella lamps and other products that would repel bugs that annoy people, including mosquitoes, would go away. If the annoying bugs would go away from the lamps, foreign customers would, buy, would come and buy the lamps, leaving Angolia richer than it was before. We could spray mosquito habitats if it is bothering someone with mosquito repellent, making them flee somewhere else, leaving Angolians as happy as could be. Our proposed solution is that we will do a big fundraiser the follow the path run to pay for more affordable houses with mosquito repellent and citru citronella lamps. Please help support our cause and we hope you enjoyed our presentation. Thank you.